Chai Cats Chalk Talk with Marshall Ferguson. Hello oh, and welcome to Chai Cats Chalk Talk, everyone. Hey, thank you for clicking on the link. I really do appreciate that. Now. In week two of the CFL season, there was a lot to get to. The BC Lions came in on a short week flying across the country on the home opener on Canada Day and the fireworks and laid a beat down to the Ticats. There's really no other way to be able to say that, but they didn't do it with a brilliant aerial attack. They didn't throw the ball all over the field. Jonathan Jennings wasn't this crazy dual threat quarterback who ran for 100 and threw for 200, anything like that. In fact, he only had 27 attempts and 16 completions for the whole game. Jeremiah Masoli had 17 completions in the first half. So how did they do it? How did they pull this victory off in such a lopsided fashion? First off, and this goes without saying, the Ticats offense simply did not do a good enough job of staying on the field. BC ran 56 offensive plays to Hamilton's 47. That difference of nine plays was caused by Hamilton going just 38% on second down conversions and losing the time of possession battle by nearly 12 minutes. So how did BC convert on their second down opportunities and also control the clock by more than 12 minutes over the Tiger Cats? Well, they did it using something that people in the CFL aren't real fond of these days. They don't actually, they don't like to talk about it much. It's called running the ball. Right, crazy. I know, most people don't want to talk about it these days, but they did it from a variety of creative offensive sets. It didn't matter if it was first and 10, if they were backed up in their own end, if they were in the score zone, if they were at midfield second and long. They took out a receiver or two and they threw in an extra offensive lineman or a fullback consistently. They ran it for a substantial part of their game plan. And there's three main sets that they use and I want to be able to show you them today in Ticats Chalk Talk. Come a little closer, robot cameraman. Look, no, not that close. Get the camera on my face, man. Relax, relax. This way, right here. Thank you, robot cameraman. I appreciate that. The first set that you see from the BC Lions was a heavy set. Right here, what they're basically going to do is just put an extra offensive lineman on one side, and Roly Lombala was playing fullback for the BC Lions on the other side. In the bunch set, what they would do is make it look as though they were just in a receiver three-person bunch, but they were actually putting an offensive lineman on the line of scrimmage with the fullback being right here, and he was able to move across the formation. We'll get to that in a second. And finally, the one that I think was the biggest challenge to the Ticats, they went with their two-back formation right here, where they had the fullback Roly Lombala in the game with Jeremiah Johnson. The first play of the game was unfortunately a sign of things to come for Ticats fans. A heavy set of six linemen and a fullback with an eighth man added into the blocking scheme as a slot back went across the formation. Jeremiah Johnson, who would finish with 12 carries for 76 yards, made Jeff Tisdale miss badly, and immediately the seven-man Lions front has created a 17-yard pickup on the ground. The way the Tiger Cats originally decided to attack the seven-man offensive line was to go with their regular 4-3 set. That just means they have their four defensive linemen in the game. They have their three linebackers and Simone Lawrence, Larry Dean, and Rico Murray in the game as well. But after they gave up a couple of big rushes, they decided to sub out a defensive back, which left room for them to be able to bring in Michael Atkinson off of the bench. He came in and sat right in the middle of that defense, and they became a 51 front, where they would actually move Larry Dean over to the short side of the field, and Simone Lawrence became your middle linebacker. You're probably wondering why Simone Lawrence? Well, because he can run sideline to sideline with the best of them. Five down linemen, Tracy, Nevis, Laurent, Atkinson, and Chick. It was a good adjustment, which helped to slow down the early ground attack. Another adjustment the Tiger Cats tried with their 5-1 defensive line set was a defensive back being left on the short side of the field, in this case, Johnny Sears Jr., in order to be able to stay in man coverage on the running back. Adding an extra defender to the boundary was significant considering the number of times BC attacked the short side with their ground game. Time and time again, Johnny Sears Jr. would find his way to the ball from the lingering defensive back position on the outside of that left tackle. He was making plays all over the place, but no doubt he felt lonelier than an Adam Levine date at an after party. The next hurdle for the Tiger Cats defense to clear against this BC Lions rushing attack was to be able to deal with the bunch set that we described a little bit earlier. Basically, usually when you go into a bunch set and you split somebody out wide and they're standing up like a receiver, they are a receiver or they're a tight end or they're a fullback. What the Lions did is they put an extra offensive lineman in at that point position. You're wondering, why would you split an offensive lineman out wide? Well, you're basically trying to get angles and have a little bit of a size mismatch to be able to go toss to the outside or block down from that defensive end position as well. It's a lot of variation possible from there. Plus, you have a fullback here, Roy Labala, who at this point could lead up into the hole. He could go across the formation right here. 
he could lead you out on a toss play that way. It's a very small lineup and that's why we call them heavy sets because they give you the ability to be very multiple with what you do in between the tackle box. Fullback Rolly Lombala crosses the formation to block the backside defensive end or slip through for the outside linebacker depending on his assignment. It allows five offensive linemen in the formation to block down while the tight end deals with the backside wide defensive end being Adrian Tracy. It's the same blocking scheme used from a seven-man offensive line, but it looks vastly different when you act in that bunch and the extra offensive lineman as the point man in that bunch. The Ticats are lucky Jeremiah Johnson did not see this hole and decided to press the front side of the play as it's called instead of following his fullback. BC attempted to use this bunch formation again later on in the game and instead of just going inside between the tackles or pulling Roly Lombala this direction to the outside on the far side of the play, they tried to just go towards the bunch. What they tried to do was to pull this tackle out and around to be a lead blocker. They tried to get an offensive lineman to block down on Adrian Tracy who was right there for the Hamilton Tiger Cats of course playing his defensive end position. They tried to get the fullback Roly Lombala to lead out in front like this. They tried to get the wide receiver to block down in here. There's a lot of motion. It's very intricate blocking schemes. You know what breaks up intricate blocking schemes? When you have a guy like Johnny Sears Jr. shoot the gap when you have that tackle pull. When you have Larry Dean flying from his middle linebacker position over the top and shooting that gap as well in between. That's the best way to be able to counter these heavy sets is team speed, defense, and flying sideline to sideline. It helped the Tiger Cats slow down the rushing attack of the Lions for just a little bit. The last heavy formation that the Tiger Cats had to deal with on this Canada Day barrage from the BC Lions was the two-back set. This one just involves five offensive linemen, the fullback and Roly Lombala, and the running back being either Jeremiah Johnson or after he got hurt, Shaq Murray Lawrence. The pro in this formation is just being able to communicate from fullback to running back, pointing out people that you're going to block. You don't really get that with your hand in the dirt or separated by five, six, seven yards in different formations. In this formation, the communication that they used was perfect and it opened up a lot of passing opportunities. Several times on Friday, the Lions passed out of this formation. It became clear while watching the tape that their primary objective from the two back set was to give Jonathan Jennings maximum protection and allow him to get a clear look downfield. The benefits of having both backs communicating in the backfield are clear on this play in the second quarter. Jeremiah Johnson sees Courtney Steven creep forward to the line of scrimmage and tries to tell Lombala he will block Steven. Lombala shakes it off like any good catcher would do and tells Johnson to go block Simone Lawrence who's blitzing from his will linebacker position. He promises to pick up the blitzing safety in Courtney Steven and he does so, allowing Jonathan Jennings to get a clean shot downfield to Nick Moore for the first down because the running backs communicated in this two back set. The value of having these two running backs in protection was never truer in terms of the communication where they could share information than on this play because normally what would happen here in this play is that when you have Courtney Steven wander down into the box and then sit over here, that means that now this offensive tackle is going to go, okay, I've got here, which means that I tell my guard, you've got to lock up here, we're going here, 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 and when Simone Lawrence comes flying off the edge, the running back, Jeremiah Johnson, picks this up. And in a six-man blocking scheme, that's fine, but you can't account for a guy like Courtney Steven coming flying through, especially when, as he did, Adrian Tracy drops out into pass coverage. The difference here is with the seven-man protection scheme that BC used so much throughout this game, you had the ability to have this tackle get messed up. He's standing in no man's land as the play happens. But instead of just standing there and not being able to help anyone, chipping inside on Drake Nevis, there's a helper, there's an extra man, and that's where Roly Lombala steps right up into the middle and picks it up. So now, you've counteracted dropping into pass coverage, you've double teamed on Drake Nevis, you've double teamed inside on Ted Laurent, which was a strategy they used a lot in that game as well against these great defensive tackles. You've soaked up John Chick, you've stopped Simone Lawrence at the point of attack, and you have Roly Lombala standing there communicating perfectly to pick up the blitz. Time and time again, the Lions used this two-back formation to protect Jennings to give him extra time to be able to look downfield and throw strikes. The Ticats are lucky. It did not result in more long passes being completed, like this shot down the left sideline to Brian Burnham. He was very close to breaking this game open much earlier than it was. Altogether, the Lions used these three very distinct, heavy offensive sets to be able to run the ball 27 times. That's a lot more than the league average for 129 yards. It's pretty impressive. And you wonder how much the Winnipeg Blue Bombers will adapt some of that offensive strategy going against the Ticats on Thursday night. 
They're not real big on protecting the quarterback and they don't run the ball especially well even with the addition of Andrew Harris thus far through two games. So it makes you think, could Paul Apollese really go that much in a different direction than his spread philosophy? We'll find out. Thursday night, 5.30 p.m. is the start of the pregame show. I've got the call at 7 p.m. alongside Coach John Salavantis. Of course, we'll have all of your postgame coverage as well on Martian Milton and game day. Ticats at noon. What else do you want? Just go to ticats.ca or tsn1150.ca. We've got it all there for you. Thanks for watching Ticats Chalk Talk, everyone. Enjoy yourself at the game on Thursday.